The first game is Portal, the original Portal. What we especially took from that is the idea of having a great story and a great narrative in a puzzle game. That a puzzle game shouldn't always only be about the puzzle itself, but can also tell a great story. And the idea of having a character in this puzzle, instead of just having it being, for example, a mouse curse or something that you control around, but an actual character that inspired us a lot, that we wanted the player to be in the game, to have something to control around, to identify with and feel, that's me. And of course, portals are so cool that we had to have portals in our game as well. The second major game was Limbo that originally came out for the Xbox and done by some other Danish uh, developers as well. It really brought through the whole idea of a surreal and unique setting and especially unique aesthetics in a puzzle game. Something that you can't walk by without turning your head and looking at and saying, what's that? I, I need to interact with that. They also placed a lot of value on the great narrative in a puzzle game, but also opened up for the idea that the narrative shouldn't be explained fully, that it's something that the player must interpret themselves. And when they're done with the game, they sit back and say, what was actually the meaning of this game? And ask somebody else, did they interpret it in another way? And of, of course, the whole concept of a game can be short, but still be a great experience. It's not something you should drag on. If you've told your story and made your point, it's better to make a short game than a long game where you just repeat yourself. Bastion was a huge inspiration for us as well, not for the mechanics in the game, but the visual style and the isometric view. The whole idea of this floating artistic world that looks like it had been painted is something that we've bought into a lot. The whole pace in that game, the feeling of the controls is something we, we, we've not tried to mimic, but been inspired a lot by how they did it and constantly compared ourselves to how does how did it feel to control the game and be in the game world. The fourth one, Banyo Kasui, one of my favorite games from when I was a kid. In Banyo Kasui, the, the levels were open when you got into them. They didn't have a linear way to go where you had to go from the start and to the finish. When you got into a level, you could explore it however you wanted and do the different objectives and quests in whatever order you wanted to do. So this whole idea of not having a start and finish, but more of a context to play in, was something I always wanted to do. Uh, I find that far more interesting than just A to B. The last one, the fifth game, might actually sound a bit weird. World of Warcraft or a specific quest type in that game. And that would be uh, escort quests where you have to escort another character to safety. A lot of people actually hate these quests, but they remember every single one of them that have been in the game. And I think that's because these quests altered the, the challenge the, the player was expecting and they demanded something new from the player. They had to take care of another character and they had to anticipate what direction was that character going? Do I have to intercept enemies? before they reach her. And I actually think that that's a kind of mechanic that just it's different for people and they challenge them in a new way. And that is what we wanted to do with Back to Bat. Back to Bat.